is the crew getting set. God willing. So before I completely unpack and repack for next weekend's Winter Mountaineering School in the Adirondacks, I wanted to quickly go through this past weekend up on the Northville Placid Trail in the Adirondacks, and specifically we went up Wakeley Mountain. I'll put up a, a link to some photographs that maybe give you a sense of what was going on. We went to bed on Friday, on Saturday evening at, at two degrees maybe 10, 12, 14 inches of snow overnight. And being not from, being, being from New York City and not Minnesota, we, we had, to, had already planned to bug out, to pack up on Sunday morning. Um, in part, the drive back down the New York State Thruway was going to be treacherous, which it was. But quickly, I ended up taking not the Mystery Ranch Terra Frame 80, but the, the Mystery Ranch T100. It just, it packed better when I was in the motel room the night before, and I was just able to get more of what I needed to bring, and I'll, I'll, give, I'll put a photo there of what the pack actually looked like when it was loaded up. I had my, my compression sack with my clothing strapped here, my shovel was on the back, along with a, that down pad, etc. so the pack even looked bigger than it is now. It came in at, at just about 65 pounds, so which is a good 30 pounds more than I'm used to carrying on a typical two-night, three-day, two-night trip in the, in, the, in the three seasons, much less in the summer, of course. I'll use my ULA OM 2.0 for that. In any event, um, in any event, and I had to carry... Fortunately, one of the fell. everyone else had a sled, a pulk, except for myself, and they were able to pull 95 pounds instead of hauling my 65 pounds on the mostly rolling, um, groomed um, snowmobile trails uh, on Cedar River Road that we were on until we made it to the Northville Placid Jump. But again, I had to use this Mystery Ranch Hard Scrabble pack which is rated at 22 liters i think that's too generous of course they're including the torpedo box but generally in here all i had was my wait, uh, less than less than 10 pounds that again somebody had to carry for me but my ski goggles were in here and really the only thing that was in here in this bag was my mountain hardware down puffy which just is incredibly warm puffy uh, but you only need it when you're standing still, of course, and at night in camp. And then this uh, hard shell, which is, you know, nice. It's uh, made by Wool. Uh, this is a Woolrich brand. You can see that. Maybe not. Woolrich brand. And, you know, this has really served me quite well. I have in here somewhere the Octarix Beta SL which took a lot of abuse, um, bushwhacking, more or less, up Wakeley Mountain. That took a lot of abuse. I'll actually have to examine it for punctures and whatnot. But the shells operated mostly the same. The, the Octerix Beta SL, as you know, was $450, $500. I don't even know. But it, it performed. And it fit over all of my layers. So just quickly what worked for me and what didn't, again, I needed to carry that. I needed to haul my stuff in there. The eyeglasses, uh, this is from, from ULA. This is the optional pouch that hooks onto the shoulder strap and that was good for my camera. And then again, I mentioned earlier, I had to get, 
can find it now. But that Arcteryx, that Arcteryx pouch um, really came in handy for lip balm and for a whole bunch of um, granola bars, not the pine bars. And I've learned a couple of things about that also about which snack bars are, everything froze up, everything completely froze up. And I just got out of the car and still some of my stuff is still frozen up. This is an Alps Mountaineering um, compression bag. I forgot what I had in here. And packing up on Sunday morning, and I did a lot of this on Saturday night, it was just such an ordeal, such an ordeal. It was tough. What is that? Oh, this is a, these are Wiggies Lamolite, he calls them Lam, Lamolite, Climbing Shield Lamolite, or Lamolite, I think it's Lamolite. Booties, they're not down booties, they're his version of what these, of what, uh, of the down booty. So I tried these out, worked very well. One thing that I'm very happy about was my, my sleep system. He also makes these socks lamo out of the material he uses lamolite but didn't have a chance to test these in in any way they slid right off my feet at night in my bag and to try them i couldn't try them actually hiking because again it was so cold you button everything up and now you're not going to take things off just to try the socks on and you know, I'm still out on this because of the way the seams are. And so I'm concerned the way they're, this guy makes equipment that's functional in the super cold weather, not, 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 he's not winning any designer awards. That's not his intention, but you'll see, you see the way the seams are on this product and on the inside. So the seams are not on the inside. There is a seam on the inside here. I don't know how bothersome that was. In any event, I didn't have a chance to test those out. Little down pillow, my, one of my favorite, favorite pieces of gear for the three seasons. Didn't use it in the summer because uh, I'll tell you, I, had to, I actually ended up using that puffy as my pillow will go back. Fortunately, I had brought five different pairs of Wolex bottoms in addition to, I don't have here, it's in my bed with my, the clothing that I came home with. But I had, what is this? Actually, actually this, this is a North Face wool, merino wool bottom. In any event, I brought four pairs of these in addition to a silk bottom and ended up wearing four of the five base layers and then I also had five on uh, layers on the top and wore four out of the five in addition to the puffy these fox river liner socks look how long those are and they come up way up to my knee those these really really performed well it's a and they were I mean they were pricey Sixteen, seventeen dollars, maybe. I, you know, that's not so pricey. You get, what, you get what you pay for. I have to end up. I have to go back to hand washing my gear. The machine just tears this stuff up. So this is this brand. Okay, hopefully that's better. So this is a, you still can't see that. They're still constructing on the apartment next door. They'll be doing that for weeks. And then, so I wore that liner sock and then I wore, uh, these are, are these darn tough? Yeah, these are the darn tough socks, but I actually wore not these. I wore the, the Kenetrek hunting socks. So I wore that liner socks, liner, liner sock, the Kenetrek hunting sock which kind of looks similar to this down to this darn tough and then i wore the rab vapor barrier liner over that and it did its it did its job the the booty of the 
these are my these are the Baffin Yohus Y O H O that I used and so with this inner boot liner and this kept dry my feet were moist not wet but the so the vapor barrier liner actually did its job and the boots mostly did their job they're a half size too small for me going downhill going down Wake Mountain my toes were just crushed into the toe box the only time I've look still a piece of ice comes off of that snowshoe in any event boots mostly work well what I really enjoy about these boots are that quick lace, quick lace system um, you know for the winter mountaineering school I'm not going to take those of course I'm not of course not of course but we're doing crampon ice climbing crampon work and so there's too much flex in this sole it's a really great it's a really great cold weather hiking boot but not zero degrees so instead I'm taking I'll use this I'll use this scarper inverno boot the liner here is much thicker than on the Baffin boot, so I think that'll be great. I would rather, you know what I would rather do? Two things is, um, I also have this North Face boot, and it also has a removable liner so it does comply with the winter mountaineering school requirements of having an inner booty. Ah, so here's the thing with these North Face boots. Which is, these are actually the booties for the North Face boot, port, <laughs> port and starboard. Good, right? So they lace up. This is the booty, nice and thick. This itself, is thicker, heavier and thicker than the one in the Baffin model. So that'll be warmer. And then the North Face boot itself has, has, look at this. This is why I'm sending these boots back. This is what, anyway, the North Face boot has, also has an inner, an inner booty, which is, which is attached. So you're really getting with this North Face boot, you're really getting two liners you're getting the one right this one and then the second liner here which is actually attached the it's it's stiff that's not bending and the material of course not of course is water resistant i don't know why they don't say it's waterproof because they have the zipper the gator up here so this is the boot i would like to take but it's a size or half size too small, and I, I don't think I can get from back country. Maybe I can, today's only Tuesday. Maybe I can get a, a half size larger. But here's why I would send back these boots, because they use this zipper, which just is not, it's, it really seems to me, look, I can't even pull this closed. I mean, they are brand new. I mean, look at that. Look how I'm pulling on this thing. I mean, this is, that's ridiculous. But, and so I'm, I'm very concerned. I don't even want to mess with it. I'm so concerned that this brand new boot is going to rip on me. And now I, and then I'll have to mess with backcountry. I'm not even going to do it. You know why? It's too much. But I would rather take actually this Zamberlan. This is not the Everest boot. This is the Iger boot. This thing is just unbelievable, unbelievably well constructed from my standpoint. And I'm not a mountaineering. I have zero, zero, close to zero experience with what, with, you know, mountaineering. But this is just seems like such an incredibly well-made boot. And this zipper is what the zipper should be like. 
I mean, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it has this inner, inner booty, but I didn't read the instructions carefully. I didn't read the description carefully enough. And this is actually attached. It's attached, it's not removable. And so this does not meet this, the requirements of the Winter Mountaineering School. Um, I'll tell you, this is a US size 11, running a, large enough for me, I think. And um, I think I'll, they were expensive, made in Italy. They were expensive, but I think I'm going to keep these because they're such a nice boot. Whereas I'll send back the North Face boot Oh, you know what? I'll order the North Face boot in any event. Forget about that. Came in handy for covering up just some home, uh, some uh, Lowe's home wrap. Came in handy for covering all the stuff up in the snow. Snow stakes. piece of um, plywood, I guess that's 3 16 that the guy rounded off for my stove, really needed that. Um, trash, too much trash, this outdoor research parka, you know, it froze anyway, everything froze up, everything froze up. Everything froze up. Here's the other wrap sock, which is good. So I found both of these now. What's in here? Oh, this is the this is the glove liner hand warmers. I don't know if they're allowed, but I don't really care. Rab mittens with the inner inner glove worked reasonably well. Unfortunately, I bought the medium size which fits perfectly well in my living room out in the field when it was 10 degrees and 20 degrees i just could not get my hand in here without so much difficulty and what ended up happening crazily is that i would spend five minutes three minutes getting on both mittens. I had to put, there's another hand warmer stuck in the thumb here. Anyway, I had to, it's two of them. Those from Amazon are not as good as the ones that I bought from Walmart, although it's the same brand name. I have to look into that. I spent, you know, two or three minutes getting on these mittens only to forget that I didn't put my backpack on. And so you can't buckle, do anything with the mittens on. So I had to take these off, put the pack on. I mean, just, uh, you know, things you learn, right? Learn by making mistakes. And I made a lot of mistakes, but we're still here. Here's that Scarpa Inverno shell. I won't go through that. The tubs, snowshoes, uh, really worked well, particularly this mechanism in the front, stick your boot in. Ow. I still have some frostbite in my thumb. Stick the boot. Stick the boot in, knock that down, and I could do that with my glove on. And this just locks down like that really well. Of course, you have the back. It's a nice, it's a much nicer system than the ones I've seen on the MSR Lightning or Sense that the other fellows had. These shoes were much more expensive, but the ease of getting these on and off, in my view, much better. These are the Flex VTR XL with that elevator guy that came in handy. And, f and I was able to, um, use my pole eventually to knock that back down, to pick it up and knock it down as I needed to on the mountain. Balaclava froze up. This was just a little too small and kind of constricting on my neck, but it also froze up. 
the Parker, the OR Parker. I learned the second night to put the water bottle filled with hot water, but I put that in my foot box and was able to, use the other glove for that Rob, was able to then have uh, water in the morning. I had a theory, more, more snow in my living room. These guys with the construction next door, um, so in this parka, I had this 1400 milliliter, still frozen, algae, and I really like for the three seasons this rubberized to, uh, hydro pack container in the first night the Nalgene froze up, but this one didn't freeze up. And my sense was, hey, the ice crystals must have more difficulty adhering to the outside of this, to the inside of the rubber rather than the, the uh, Nalgene, the acrylic or whatever that is. But that theory turned out not to be right. This guy, it's still frozen solid. And more importantly, more importantly, was this the cap froze solid and I wasn't able to get the cap off and every, we were all dehydrated because we just could not heat up. It was too cold to actually get the stove, stove, stove started or at least I couldn't get it started. It was just too cold to keep my hands out of the mittens that long. I started off using these thinner waterproof cold weather gloves just to check them out and they worked well for while I was hiking the first day and then of course with the wetness and moisture from my skin also froze up and ended up not being worth a whole lot. I didn't need to use the silk liner which I brought and I also didn't use the vapor barrier liner. The pack Pack cover a little a little small. This is the large Cedar Summit. It's actually the Ultra Sill pack co pack cover. Is this yes? This is a Cedar Summit. It's the Cedar Summit brand, large, and it did fit over the pack. I would have it, it could have been a little bit larger. You know the pack worked well as I mentioned before the hip belts work great in the living room when you have all your layers on and this or any of the of the nylon parkas it slips right down and, and everything ends up being carried a lot of the weight ends up being carried on your shoulders anyway and that's just the way it is um, I think the yoke was adjusted properly. I'll have to take another look at that. I carried a 30 ounce MSR plus the smaller 11 ounce and just about ran out of fuel between cooking and melting snow for water. I, next time I'll, I'll, I'll have at least two of these large bottles, large MSRs, probably three. I actually was going to stay out, stay out another night because I was more comfortable in my tent than actually, I was more comfortable in my tent than I was hiking out and certainly the drive down the throughway was not fun at all. Wind River gloves worked well again for whatever reason they're still frozen inside no hand warmer um you know worked worked well but not well enough at five or ten degrees just not not well enough fingers froze up there is a warmer here that i didn't a pocket which i didn't use but the gloves froze up and so not uh I have some more bars left. 
the Nature Valley granola bars, these things froze up. Solid, almost broke my teeth on those. And what I, but what I learned as well is that that is preferable. Someone just told me, put them in the freezer and cut them up into bite-sized chunks rather than leave them in the bar. That would have been beneficial. These Kind bars, great, crumble all over the place. And so I won't be using those Kind bars anymore. I'll stick with the, with the Nature Valley bars and cut them up into pieces before I go out. My ditty bag, of course, not of course, but didn't ended up not using the water purifier because the SteriPen, and didn't end up using the SteriPen because we were melting snow. Just got some more sanitizer. Again, just not, it was just too cold to be fiddling around with going through that stuff. So, and then this, I, I, I fortunately I had I had plenty of matches and I found this before just impossible impossible to do to do that motion with frozen hands at least for me so the matches came in handy brought a whole bag of foot warmers and hand warmers thank God the other mitts. These, I, I have to test these, but the short, these, these are Surefire, the one, two, three battery, right? For both the SteriPen and my headlamp. And these failed on me. So I was at, without a headlamp. It would only light the, the red LED, which was enough along with the uh, spare light that I keep. But I'll, I wanna test whether these batteries versus the Duracell, versus the headlamp, the black diamond headlamp, what, I, want, I don't know what failed. That's a mitten cover, that's a MLD, Mountain Laurel Designs. I didn't use my earplugs. One of the best, best inventions, items that I carry is this little MP3 player from SanDisk to help me get to sleep. And really, that's really helped me out so many times. Too much cordage I carried, wasn't able to make the hot cocoa, just again, too cold for that. Too much, way too much in my first aid kit, but the, the lidocaine patch actually did come in handy. I needed the lidocaine patch. And also, and also another great product Great products are these dehydrated paper towels. Really come in handy, really come in handy. For cleaning up some Luco tape I brought, plenty of um, aspirin and, and I brought some Ambien. Didn't need the body glide. So such so much, too much stuff I was carrying. You know, it's also a really great Invention and I learned this a long time ago that people tend to neglect hygiene on the trail But I learned how critical it was to maintain proper hygiene especially and I'll and I'll weigh what <laughs> I'll weigh what the handle is that I saved on cutting my toothbrush off It seems kind of silly after carrying all this stuff, but another great invention development and equipment are these compressed dehydrated toothpaste tablets. Just a nice invention, pop it in your mouth, chew it up, and then brush. Great invention. Again, the bag took, it really took a lot of abuse. It really did. And I'll have to examine whether there's anything, any problems now, but I don't, quickly, I just don't see anything at issue with this bag. It's wet. And also, I think I'm changing my opinion of this, of the, 
what do you call these straps? The mole straps, the mole straps? I don't know, I'll have to look that up. But it seems to me now, in hindsight, I can do more with these straps, such as lashing my, my shovel and my tent to the back than the mesh, the stretchy mesh that, that the, um, the ULA packs have or the, who makes that Southwest pack? Is that, it's Z-Packs makes that pack and I think MLD makes similar packs as well out of Dyneema. Great for the summer, the other weather. I, I'm, I'm sort of think, rethinking my opinion about those, about these straps. I really am. I took everything out of these torpedo pockets. Again, everything I carry is not in here because it was so stuff sacked to my warm light. Ah, look at this. Ended up, ended up busting a pole, a rear tent pole of my Stevenson's warm light because I wasn't, ha wasn't careful enough, so it cost me $12 plus $12 shipping for the replacement. I think that should get here this uh, next in, in time. God willing, I'll call up, uh, what's her name, Kim, I think. In the top, a compression sack. See the summer compression sack. Just see what I have in here, I'm just unpacking. Oh, this is the waterproof bag. This is a waterproof bag as well, which is recommended at Winter Mountaineering School. And I see now, boy, this bag alone now is just so heavy. What's in here? Still frozen. Ah, I had to look, <laughs> you know, the instructions to the warm light tent give nice instructions about fold it in, in half here and then fold, uh, fold the, the wind, the door side over and then fold it in half and fold it in half again, roll it up and put it back. Ain't happening. Shoved it right in the bag at zero degrees. It's still frozen. Let me put this in my bathtub. Four of the five campers on this trip had the Stevenson's warm light tent, so that says a whole lot. My opinion is still out on that because of the way the front of the tent is slanted this way, so I'm sitting in the front and my head is actually out of the tent. The snow is coming down and just blowing it coming right into the tent. So, you know, no vest no real vestibule area. You know, it was, was great. Look at that, I cracked this, the uh, Ziploc's cracked, but a great thing to take along. Look at this whole thing is just busted up. These wheat things kept nice and dry. It was nice to have those wheat things along. Um, the MSR Whisper Light, of course, a real champion, except that you know, you have to pump up the pressure on this thing. I promise everything is just still frozen, getting so wet. You have to pump up the pressure. Pain in the neck to do when it's freezing out. It's really, it really is. So one of the fellas had a, a propane, a propane, not a butane, a propane, a Coleman propane stove with a burner on top, it seemed like the um, one of the, the MSR Superfly, but it wasn't a Superfly, I think. In any event, pain in the neck to pump this thing up. Work, worked well, except I left the pot, the titanium pot, with water overnight, froze up. I had to bang it against the tree to get the, fr froze the ice out and bent the corner a bit so I have to uh, bang that out I'm sure the top is not actually that's bending easy. sit pad again ch 
Champion product just came in handy. It's a dollar for that thing, tea bottle. I'm testing the light. I'm testing this black diamond light. I don't know whether it's the batteries or, oh no, it's, it's not black diamond. This is a Princeton Tech. And I really like this light because it has a, the LED and you see the battery is not lighting the white LED. So I don't know if it's the battery, that Surefire battery, or whether the light just doesn't function at that low temperature. I hard, find it hard to believe it's the light. Also, in the cold weather, getting this top off to swap out the battery, difficult. It took my pen knife to do that. So versus the versus a uh, and also turning it on and off with mittens problematic food bag I really messed up on my lunches meaning I took peanut butter and jelly in wraps and chicken chicken salad and it stinks now with um, chicken salad with cheddar cheese in a tortilla shell <laughs> mayonnaise froze up solid I could have beat off somebody with this thing uh, so that was tough I had to eat that perfect damn light another Princeton tech this is the second of these lights I have this it's a great light hanging from from wherever the slide switch is you know it just doesn't work I'm not going to buy this light again I'm gonna send this one back I'm just so upset it's my second one very finicky slide switch and you see it was even on in the bag I don't know Fork worked well. Oh, so again, my lunch, what a failure, big failure, was my homemade mountain house, which is really the Noor's pasta, which you put into boiling water and some milk. <clears throat> I used, and I've used in the three seasons, that Noor's bag as sort of a mountain house cooker, and it's worked in the summer. And then I'll dump in this can of, of, of Kalma. It's a nice meal. It's a nice meal. I didn't even open this up. I was afraid it was frozen. And the first time I did it, it's, it comes in its own oil. And just the, the oil, a bad idea. Bad idea. And the Z-Packs bag just worked great as a food bag to hang that up. The, I thought this would be great, which is a, uh, you know, a chamois, I forget what this thing is called. It also froze up like everything else. I don't know what to expect to not froze up. I tried also, tried out the seal skins, gloves, waterproof, great for the summer. For the winter, just froze up even when I'm, when I'm hiking. They got wet and did it did their their job with respect to keeping the water out but froze up so what the heck let's see what's in here also I don't, it's just so heavy the stove base that trillium stove base for the msr great 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 product i'll figure out a way to, to attach this permanently to that uh, piece of plywood to hold the MSR stove. Really, really good product. Definitely worth So, so again, this, this Princeton Tech light, whether I, whether the switch is in the on or off position, doesn't actually, doesn't actually stay off. I'm never going to buy a product from them again. Cozy. Huh. You know, what, what actually did work well for breakfast was those Idaho potatoes inside this ridiculously manufactured Nalgene warmer, 
which doesn't go to the top of the Nalgene bottle for some stupid reason. I don't know, but it did work pretty well as a cozy for those, that thing. Fortunately, that was great for breakfast. And also my coffee mixture worked really great. These are the Noors that I use for dinner for the three seasons, work great for the winter, no good. Ah, what else was great, really worked out well. Ah, and so another, another, what I figured out is the Ziplocs with this opening. Look, I can't, in, the, in my living room, I'm having a hard time getting that open. But the sliders, much uh, better to use in the winter than that closure, I figured that out. And what was great that I did do was the instant oatmeal that worked great for breakfast, nice and hot in that Sea to Summit um, coffee mug. Really worked well, especially, especially with that maple syrup. Great. That, that was great, thank God. Here's the, frozen up, here's the Octeris Beta SL. Let me put this in the in the bathtub. Um, I'll just show you. So the Beta XL, SL, SL, SL. This is the large. It went around all of my layers. Plus that puffy took a lot of abuse. Bushwhacking up the trail. Not complete bushwhacking, but it was really overgrown. I fell a half a dozen times. Really scraped it up. And I don't see any damage. I don't see any damage. And I kind of abused it. It's frozen up. What I don't like, or I have to figure out, this is made for, to, for use over a helmet. And so it just came way down over my, over my face and I couldn't see. With the pack on, I just wasn't in a position to do any adjusting of this. Of course, I'll do that next time I go out before I put the thing on. But on the trail, just no adjustment was possible. And it looks like on this item that this is the only adjustment point on the back of this hood, and that's not gonna cut it. That's not gonna cut it, so I have to figure out what to do about that jacket. Oh God, this, you know, lasted about three hours. This is a great, a great hiking puffy. But it got wet down and, you know, just not good, not good. Got wet and it got worthless. I do buy, this is from, what company? Marmot. So it's a Marmot, a Marmot 600 fill with the hood. I really like this, you know, it's, it's, it, it's really a great product when it doesn't get wet. But it got wet, it froze up, and I just had to put it away. It didn't work at all. So that's the bottom of that bag. Let me just see what's in this compression sack. I'm glad I brought an extra of these silk, silk nylon compression bags because they came in handy. I was really unorganized or disorganized in the tent. Fussing around. Ah, oh, this is the the Xped Nine. Terrific, terrific, terrific product. Really did its job. 
and really did its job. What's not good about this, I'll show you this. You know, this, this, they have this, you see the hand, the hand prints there? So the way this is supposed to work is you open this valve up and use your two hands to pump that up. Works great in the living room, not happening in the cold weather. You cannot keep your hands out of your gloves or mittens long enough to actually pump that thing up. Not worth anything. So I inflated it by mouth with this valve. Thinking about all the posts that the guys have about, you know, you're, you're puffing in condensation and it's not going to function well. It worked fine for me. Hopefully there's no long-term issues because I blew in great product. I'm sure I have my sleeping bag in here. My OR XL Gore-Tex insulated gaiters. You know, work, everyone had them. It work, worked well. My, I don't have here, I have a nice pair of Arc'teryx hard shell waterproof with a vent bottom with sort of a built-in gaiter. So not quite clear. I needed these still frozen up. Let me put these in the bathtub as well. Trash bag. Bag for the tents. Again, you know, these, these buckles, they're just so hard to work with gloves on. Even now my hands are cold from handling the frozen equipment. I guess they get cold too easily. You know. A event an event waterproof. Oh, this is a sea to summit. Ah, wet. dry sack you see this is just pain in the neck I'm having trouble in the living room getting this open water bucket didn't end up using that there was no water to carry minus 40 degree it's so wet now so I'm, it's I guess it's glad that we got out early I'll have to figure out to dry this from local Libre made in the USA I forget where he is this guy George but this is a minus 40 degree bag. I mean, it was, it went down probably minus five degrees, I would say. And at first, what I did is the top, it's a top quilt. It's a top quilt. And so I tried to use the top quilt as a sleeping bag with this, because I didn't know any better, with the opening on the side as I'm sleeping and that and that didn't work because there's no way to not get drafts in here and then I figured out well let me I'll lay out lie on my back and tuck this underneath and I, I got that down and it really really worked well I went to bed shivering on Saturday I was shivering but I knew that this system would work I just knew that it would work
and it did. In less than 10 minutes, I was warmed up. In 15 minutes, I had to take off the, the heavy down parka and ended up it cinches around your neck, so you have to wear a something on your head, which is which was this, and I used it as my pillow, and it worked well. And then once it really it got very very warm, almost hot, at minus five degrees outside, it was hot inside this bed, this this top quilt, and how I worked with this, I enjoyed sort of making a making a a, a tent. Out of the top quilt because that X pad kept X pad uh, down mat kept me so warm. The top quilt I was able to sort of use my elbows and make a a sort of a tent out of it and fuss with my stuff inside my nice my nice um, <laughs> down tent system. So that worked well. And then I would and then I used this puffy as sort of a blocking mechanism for the for the opening. So I had this at my head lying on the pillow so you know so that all, all worked well and I actually knew that I had those systems down so I was happy about that so you know the bag is empty I'll make some adjustments for the winter mountaineering school and um, you know let you know what goes on there The other guys, again, they had pulks, they had sleds, and they were able to carry a lot more stuff and so had a better time of it. And then most importantly, packing out, where I needed to take a lot of time packing this bag. I only had, you know, I just, it was crunched in too much. I'll cut down on my, on my gear. But on the sleds, on the pulks, which I actually have one, but haven't gotten around to running the poles and making that hip belt system. These guys were able to pull like 95 pounds of stuff and had a better setup than I did snacks and food and whatnot. But in any event, I'll get my act straightened out and we'll see what happens at Winter Mountaineering School. See you on the trail.